Good evening. Welcome to Ten Ten Prayer Online. So yesterday we dealt on the theme of sacrifice, and the main question we ask ourselves is this: Sacrifice is about drawing near to God. Sacrifice is finding out ourselves. Is the person that we sacri- offer sacrifices to is he worthy of it all? And so the 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 homework I wanted us to do is really to think again: Is Jesus worthy of our sacrifice? You know, when you think about sacrifice, uh, Pastor Chu shared a message uh, this this weekend about drawing near to God or building our relationship with God, and he gave us four stages. And the first stage was socializing. Actually, when you socialize with God, it's a waste of time. All right, but of course, most of you won't do that. But the second stage is seeking, which is what you have been doing for the last fifty over days. From seeking, we learn so much about God that we are willing to surrender. But the fourth stage is the most powerful stage: sacrifice. And he reminded us of the story of Mary. So I thought I'd like to revisit that story again. Mary, the sister of Martha, and is found in John chapter twelve. So why don't you turn with me to John chapter twelve? And I'm just going to read a few verses in that story. So here it is that、uh, you have Mary. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where that Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was giving, given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet. And wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Then one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, said, "Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor?" Now look at this. He said it was worth a year's wages. So this is where I want to talk about the story, because when we come to God, there will always be a cost, and if we are not prepared to pay the cost, it also means. He is not worthy of it all. It means that no matter how long I've known Jesus, how long I've been a Christian, actually I don't consider my God great, worthy of it all. And when we do that, we reduce God to just I don't know. I, I don't even know what's the phrase. Something casual, something not so important. But when a person becomes very important to us. We will go to the next level. We are prepared to pay the cost. Mary considered Jesus so important to her life, not just because she had,、uh, he raised Lazarus from the dead, but because of what he knew about Jesus. Because she sat at Jesus' feet and she would listen to Jesus, and she was convinced Jesus is no ordinary person. She was convinced. She was convinced in her heart that wow, he's no ordinary person. Now think about someone that's very important and comes to our house to visit us. What will we serve this? Remember, I mentioned it in the, when we were doing Malachi. What will we serve the person? He will be worthy of us preparing the best food, putting up the most beautiful flowers, decorating the home. All the effort. Why all the effort? Because he's worthy of it all. Mary had the same. Relationship with God, with Jesus, she considered him so worthy that it says she took a pint of perfume that was very expensive. Some scholars think that this pint of perfume cost probably her entire、uh, savings. Wow! Why would I give my entire savings to Jesus? Because he was worthy of it all. Judas thought that no, she should not have done it. Because it's not worthy. See, Jesus, Judas, his main problem was Jesus is not worthy of it all. That's why he could betray him. There's something about Judas. In spite of all the time he spent with Jesus, he did not see Jesus as someone that is worthy of his devotion. So it's an amazing person, you know, amazing thing to think about. When we talk about sacrifice, there's always a cost. For Mary, it was a very expensive perfume. But today, I also want us to look at King David, so that we understand 
that cost is an important part of our time and commitment to Jesus. Whether we serve Him, whether we do anything, there's always a cost. So turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel 24 is a story of King David. Uh, I won't go into it. Where he has uh, done something wrong and then the angel appears to him and tells him to build an altar. So on verse, uh, I, won't, I won't go into details. Or not the angel, sorry. The prophet, one, on that day, verse 18, Gad, the prophet Gad went to David and said, Go, build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded him and then the Aruna came, saw the king and of course Aruna respected the king very well and when he found out that David needed the threshing floor to build an altar, he wanted to give him free. I mean, of course he would do that. But David said this thing to Aruna. So look at it in verse 24. The king replied to Aruna, No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Wow! I will not sacrifice to the Lord burnt offerings that cost me nothing. That is truly about cost and also about the honouring of God. I think it is time that we as believers, as Christians, begin to give God so much honour by not constantly counting the cost. When I think about coming to church, worshipping Him, it is also about cost. And sometimes it costs us a lot to go to church because our children need to be waken up, they need to be prepared, even that we need to walk up the stairs and all these things. But once we count the cost, we will come into His presence without sacrifice. Perhaps that's why God doesn't appear with so much glory as He did years ago in, in, in olden days. I still remember a time when I was at university in Edinburgh and you know to go to church, it meant walking. It's not even just driving there. And in winter, it's actually quite forbidding. And I can never forget that it is quite hard to go to church every week when you have to walk through the snow, on a winter night, a winter morning. But we did it anyway. And do you know there's nothing? When I think about those old men and old women who came to church willingly and devotionally, I felt when I think about it, they truly was offering God a sacrifice. When I think about the early missionaries that came to Malaysia, wow, there was nothing to offer for them. Their country had all the comfort and yet they came. They let some left behind their children. Some they, they came in at their prime of their lives, even in their 20s and 30s. And yet they said to themselves, He is worthy of it all. I will not offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. And because of that, we are the beneficiaries of that sacrifice. Because of that, you know, in SIB, and the entire tribe was saved from extinction. And after that, all the tribes was, was saved, 500,000. So, sacrifice is about a cost. But the cost has a great result. For King David, this is the result. So David, to so look at verse 24 again. So as... David said to Aruna, No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. Verse 25, David then built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered prayer on behalf of the land and the plague on Israel was stopped. Do you know one of the things that has happened even over this whole COVID-19 thing? About 90 over people sacrificed their sleep and they maintain a 24-hour prayer shield. It's quite amazing. They're still doing it. 
I think that's sacrifice. And maybe, perhaps, I, I'm not going to say whether it's true or not, maybe that's why Malaysia's COVID-19 is still being well managed. But this is the result of sacrifice. Amen? So tonight, let's go to our homework. Read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Go and read John chapter 12 about Mary again and ask ourselves, would I have poured all that expensive perfume on Jesus? Actually, to tell the truth, I think that's a really hard question. Maybe I, I'm not prepared to do it too. Perhaps I would not be willing to sacrifice. So when I share this, I'm not saying I have got there. I'm just sharing it because God is probing me and He's asking me, am I worthy of it all? Then look at 2 Samuel, this story in chapter 24, and begin to ask ourselves, wow, sacrifice has a cost. If it comes to the crunch, am I prepared to pay the cost? And, and we can ask God when we reach certain crossroads, what is my sacrifice that I'm supposed to lay before you? I want to encourage all of us, including myself, there is power in the altar when there is a sacrifice. The power of the altar depends upon the cost of the sacrifice. Like in the heathen altars, if they only offer apples, actually it's less powerful than the guy who offers chicken or bulls or whatever. Yeah, so the cost of the sacrifice determines the power of the altar because it speaks of that person's heart, it speaks of that person's devotion to their deity. So spend some time, I know it's getting a little bit intense, spend some time, but allow the Holy Spirit to come in, allow God to speak to us. God is a good God. He will never demand from us a sacrifice that's beyond our doing, never, because he's a good God, never. God has never demanded from me any sacrifice that I cannot do. Amen? Amen. Come, let's pray. Let's pray. Almighty God, you who own the cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold and silver belongs to you, we have never given you anything that has not come from you. So it's you that have provided everything for us, our health, our provision, our food, so when you ask us to sacrifice something, it's duly nothing because you're worthy of it all. Almighty God, who can come? Who can come before a great God? What can we bring before a great God that owns everything? Actually, it's nothing, Lord. So will you open the eyes of our heart to see that when you ask us to step across that line and to even offer a sacrifice of time, maybe money, maybe, maybe, I don't know, whatever it is, you have never demanded from us something that is beyond us. We bless you, O Lord God. We can't imagine how beautiful was the fragrance of Mary's anointing oil on your body how it made God truly treasure her. We will never understand how meaningful it was for King David to even buy that threshing floor because something we do not understand. But Lord, may you help us understand the power and the res if results of sacrifice. Help us, Lord. Give us an understanding, O oh Lord, because truly we are blind in our own understanding. We lack wisdom. We lack understanding. But tonight, can you open the eyes of our heart and mind so that we can understand what sacrifice is really about. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming tonight. So have some time. Think about these thoughts and begin to just worship the Lord and then pray for each other. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.